Hello everyone, welcome to another session of Schneider Electric PS with training tutorials where you will learn Schneider Electric PS with programming. So let's see what we have in this lesson. In this lesson, we are going to understand the counter operations. We are going to know what is a PS counter and how an up counter function and how to use an up counter. So what is a counter? Counters are reserved areas in the memory of a CPU. The counter instruction is the only function that can access the counter memory. Counter generally have two values, the current counter value and the preset value. Counters use variables of certain data types to store numbers in the PLC. All counters need to store at least two values, the preset or counter limit value and the current or accumulated counter value. Since these two members are saved in a certain data type, they have their limits. Many peers receive these two numbers as word or integers. So from our lesson of data types, we know that a word takes 16 bit and a sign integer also takes 16 bit with the first bit being used for signing of the number. So we only have 15 bits for the actual number. This means that the maximum word value will be 65,535 and a signed integer value will have 32,767 as its maximum value. But it is actually important to note that the maximum and the minimum preset and accumulated values of the counter block depends on the data type and the data format of the counter variable. And it can change from one PLC brand to another. And however, it is important to check the programming guide for each vendor to understand the details. So what are the type of counters that exist? There are three main types of counters, the up counter, the down counter, and the up down counter. And what are some of the applications of counters? So counters can be used in a bottle filling system where we can count the number of bottles that have been filled. You can use it in a parking space application to know the number of empty spaces and those that have been filled. You can use it for packet scanning application to know how many packets have passed successfully. You can use it in a box sorting application to sort boxes either in terms of size, in terms of weight or color. And we can also use it in a sequential control application to track how many times a certain operation have occurred to perform certain actions. So we are going to begin with up counters. Now what are up counters? This is an up counter. Okay, the CTU stands for the counter up and it has this block as its symbol. Okay, so it has the count up pin, the reset pin, the preset value pin, the output pin and the current value pin. So it also has the enable a pin as well as the error notification pin like we explained in the previous previous tutorial that all function blocks have this okay have these two pins for enable and for error detection okay so let's see what is uh, what is what this text says about up counters it says that every pulse signal on the up counter input will increase the counter value by one so a pulse signal on a 0 to 1 pulse signal on this pin will increment the current counter value, the CV value by, by 1. When the counter value, when the current counter value is greater or equal to the preset value. So when this value is greater or equal to the preset value, then the output is triggered. The output becomes 1. And a pulse on the arrow input will reset the current counter value to zero. So if we have a pulse here from zero to one, then this value becomes becomes zero. Okay, hope that makes sense. Okay, so now let's look at an exercise to implement an up counter. It says that design a PLC ladder logic program that will lash the output X using either push button S1 or S2 and a push button S3 is used to enlarge X when it has been pressed and released five times. 
Another push button S4 is used to reset the counter value to zero and at any given time. All right, so you can pause this video and try this exercise. So S1 and S2 will set the value of X to one and S3, when S3 is pushed five times, it will enlarge X and S4 is used to reset or enlarge X at any given at any given time. Okay. Alright, so this is the solution to this problem. And we have already implemented it is a hard where circuit we have S1, S2, S3, and S4. Okay, wired in input 0, input 1, input 2, and input 3. Then we have the, the X wired at input output 0. So this is a function. So it says that when S1, S3, okay, a pulse signal on S3, okay, so it says that a pulse signal on S3 will increment this counter value. So we use S3 to track the number of times, okay, we to track the number of counts of this counter. And S1 and S2 are used to lash it. So if S1 is pressed, you realize that we have this normally closed contacts okay so the output contact of this counter so counter one dot q means the output contacts okay the q output of this counter you see we have wired it to the normally closed in a series with x coil so when s1 is closed okay so when s1 is closed then power will flow to the coil like that and the coil will be lashed and when s2 is, is closed then Will perform similar operation so when s is now closed then this this contact is its contact will close okay and when we now release s1 then this path now becomes becomes true okay and uh, s1 and s2 are wired in the all fashion so so that is going to they are going to operate perform the same operation since they are odd and now this contact ct u underscore one dot q is what is used now to turn off this x output and it says that when we now have a zero to one transition on this pin then a cv will increment by one and it will increment by one until it becomes five so you can see the preset value is five when it becomes five now the output becomes large when this output of this counter becomes large it will turn off this contact and x will go off okay and you can clearly see that here s4 is used to reset the counter value to zero at any given time we press it then this counter value goes to zero okay so let's jump to our logic to test this functionality okay, so i'm just going to set up the environment and then construct the circuit Okay, I've now set up my variables, all of my variables, so I will now create my project. So I will search it in directly to the environment. I will now wire my sensors. So I will now label them. I 
I will now browse and take the actual output of this counter. I will go to function blocks. Function blog is a counter one, which is the output. And I'll click here. Then OK. And this will be four variables. S3 and S4. All right. So this is what we have. I'm going to build it right now. Hope we have no errors. I'll first of all analyze it. Good, so we are good to go. I will build it now. Okay, so the project is now built. I will now connect to the PLC. And then I will transfer project to PLC run after transfer. Yes. Okay. So we are now in the run mode. Okay. So S1 or S2 is going to set X to 1 when, they are, when it is pushed. So I will just highlight everything and initialize an emission table. I will arrange your windows. Okay, so this is our animation table. Alright, so S1 or S2 is going to set it. So I will set S1 to 1. First, I will set it into the force mode. I will set S1 to 1. Okay, X is now on. You can see it from our simulation or animation or our animation table. So if it goes back to zero, it has no effect. If it goes back to zero, it has no effect. Okay, because this is a hold on contact and this counter is currently the output is currently low, so it, it does not uh, deactivate or disconnect this contact. And S3, I'll keep on incrementing the counter to S3 so it goes up counter increments by one counter increments by one so you can clearly see that it's incrementing so now it will go up to four and when it reaches five okay, when it reaches five S is going to go off so let's see when it reaches five good you realize that S has X has gone off because it has now activate Q and Q has turned off its normally closed contacts and S4 will be there to reset the will be there to reset the counter. So if I press S4, go to see our counter goes back to zero. Okay, and S2 is also an option to start up the operation again. So if I start it up. It is large and then the process continues okay so i hope this example was pretty easy to understand okay so let's go back to our presentation okay so this is another example to impl which implement the same functionality this time around we are using the sr free flop to set or reset x so you can also uh, assemble it in the software environment and test the logic they will push they will push the result will the result will be the same all right so let's review what we have learned okay we have understood that counters are reserved areas in the memory of a cpu to perform counts counters are used to generate an output on specific counts of inputs and up counter counts up from zero every pulse signal on the count of input will increase the counter value by one when the counter value the current counter value is greater or equals to the preset counter value the output is set to one and a pause on the reset input will reset the current counter value to zero okay so that is it for this tutorial and in the next tutorial we are going to look at the down counter which is a direct opposite of an up counter so please if you find this video helpful give it a thumbs up like it share it and then subscribe 
and please if you feel that there is something in this video that needs improvement please share it with me in the comment section thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video